What's up, party people? It's me, Yemi the Ferret here, with another episode of YemiCast, a video game podcast on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Apple Music? Is that what it's called now? I gotta put that into my brain. <clears throat> put that into my brain. As you may or may not tell, I am getting over that sickness that I've had for the past few episodes, but it's still a little bit there, so, you know, bear with me, everyone. But how is everyone doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I had a, had a long day of work. Uh, today was, like, the final day of E3, uh, which is Tuesday. I'm recording this on Tuesday, if you didn't, if you haven't guessed that. Uh, and, oh man, Nintendo's conference was, like, out of this world out of this world, literally, uh, and I'll talk about all that stuff on the weekend, I'm, I'm gonna put together everything of, of, of note into the weekend podcast, it's gonna be the E3 2019 extravaganza, and I'm gonna be talking about all things E3, maybe we'll have a special guest in there, maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe, maybe not, who knows, we'll find out, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to talk about E3 because there is so much that went on. This is like the first year of E3 that I've actually watched literally almost every single press conference. The only ones I haven't gotten to are the D Devolver Digital and the Limited Run um, conferences, which are a little bit smaller, I guess you would say. I had a lot of fun, like, just watching the YouTube stream of E3 as well. Just, uh, you know, Boogie2988 was was talking on the one of the forums, uh, which was one of those ones that lasted for a long time, and it was really interesting to hear what he had to say, especially after the uh, the EA Play E3. So, like I said, I'm going to get to that stuff afterwards, after, after everything's kind of settled. We'll get into that kind of stuff uh, on the weekend episode. So make sure you check that out. If you, you'll come around here, the podcast premieres on Wednesdays at 4 p.m., which is the one you're, you're at right now. It's available on all other platforms the same day, and it also premieres on Sundays at 9.30 a.m., which will be the E, uh, the E3 extravaganza. And that's all Eastern time. It's Eastern time. I live in Ohio, Cleveland, and, uh, <laughs> we are, we're good to go. Uh, so this episode is not going to have anything E3, so if you're not interested in any other gaming news right now, turn it off right now. Dislike it, unsubscribe, throw your computer out the window and say, that's enough of that, and, um, you know, then regret all your life decisions henceforth. Let's start off with one of the strange, it's a strange bit of news, but it's also relatively, like, I understand why this happened, um, but it, as essentially a uh, E3 leaker has uh, been given a... Um, a cease and desist, a cease and desist order from Nintendo. Nintendo has taken legal action on E3 leaker named Sabby, who also goes by the name Polar Panda across other channels. Uh, this person has leaked pretty much every major story that come out of E3 uh, on his Twitter, and uh, it's a little annoying. Like I stay, I stay away from this guy. I think I muted him. On, on my Twitter, so I don't see any of his stuff. I don't want to block him because, you know, I don't have anything against the guy, but it's like, I don't want to see these kind of things. So, so he already has, like, a reputation of giving out spoilers for E3 and stuff, and one of them, one notable one this year was the Xbox, Xbox's new Scarlet console announcement. Uh, so it just so happens that, uh, Sabi has been given a cease and desist order from Nintendo, and one of the replies to the tweet that Sabi made was talking about how the cease, uh, how it, the firm was involved with Nintendo in the past. So this is probably a legitimate lawsuit. Well, I, I guess not really a lawsuit, but, you know, whatever. I guess it could turn into a lawsuit. The American court system is very strange. So Sabi came out on Twitter and said this, I have been given a cease and desist from a lawyer representing Nintendo. They have my full name and everything. This means I'm not allowed to post any private trade secrets from Nintendo Co. LTD. This does not mean I cannot post things from other companies, just not Nintendo. And <clears throat> I know Nintendo wants to keep their secrets secret, but this is pretty extreme for a company. Uh, we've I don't think we've really seen this in the past, and not at least not this publicly. Uh, Sabi has grown exponentially uh, in the years uh, coming up to E3 this year, and you know a lot of people look to this person for their E3 news ahead of time, and they go, all right, he was right, or he or she, I don't know exactly. So 
essentially what this means is that Sabi, if they come out on Twitter or any social media site and say anything about the Nintendo Direct that's going to happen, they can be sued, and they will probably be sued. Um, so yeah, hopefully this isn't like a trend now. Like I hope I hope people are, still have the right to talk about things, predict things, try and do stuff like that. I know this is a little bit more than that. This is like a the whole like a leak, you know. But even then, it's like you still have that like you know people still probably aren't going to believe you half the time. But I guess this person, this Sabi person, aka Polar Panda, has been so good at predicting these things that uh, or leaking these things that people have latched on to their Twitter. So, interesting news, um, kind of scary news, uh, looking to the future. Uh, I know I'm not a leaker, and I know I don't know any leakers myself personally, but if you are a leaker, uh, you might be getting uh, some subpoenas from, uh, from some major corporations. Rasta! All right, so the probably the biggest news coming up from this week, besides from the E3 stuff, Destiny 2 is going to be going free to play, and it's going to be releasing a new DLC called Shadow Keep on the 17th of September, and it's not going to require, require any of the past expansions. Destiny 2 is one of those games that it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you did, as long as you love me. Well, that was weird. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you do in this game. Everyone's kind of had the same overall experience. I know there's some people who still love Destiny 2 to the max, but me, myself, I've always had a kind of a poor experience with Destiny and Destiny 2, and also a lot of people who love Destiny also had a poor experience with Destiny 2 and its expansions. So after they broke away from Activision, you know, they have the rights to Destiny 2 and all of its properties now, and, um... You can now, in the future, play it for free. So, to talk with me more about this, I invited Shinobi Nando onto the podcast one more time to talk about Destiny 2 and what this means for the future of the company and for Destiny 2 as well. Uh, so, let's get Shinobi Nando onto the podcast. Toot sweet, hey? All right, so now coming on to the podcast for a second time, he's the man, the myth, the legend who plays a lot of Destiny, uh, you know him, you maybe love him, which would be kind of awkward, but anyways, maybe you love him, maybe you love him, it's Shinobi Na- Nando, I almost said Nando, <laughs> <laughs> not again, <laughs> but it's Shinobi Nando, coming onto the podcast for a second time, because there's more Destiny news, that's right, there's big Destiny news, and he's here to pop some more champagne, is that right? That is that is correct, sir, you're definitely right about that. Um, it's a very exciting time to be a Destiny fan, I think. Anyways, personally. And uh, even to uh, returning fans, I think it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. uh, Because, well, Destiny is, uh, if you, it's going free to play. Well, we say free to play. You're getting vanilla year one Destiny free. And I think that's a, I think that's a brilliant thing. I think that's a really good thing, Yemi. It's a pretty good deal. I mean, uh, I, I mean, they've already kind of released it, like you said during your video, they've already kind of released it on so many platforms for free anyways. It's like, next exactly. step would have been free to play. But before we get into Destiny 2, I want uh, the audience to learn a little bit more about you. What's the history behind Shinobi Nando, the name? And also, what's your original gamer tag? And also, tell me about the Destiny experience that you've had. Well, Shinobi Nando uh, comes from the fact that Ninja Nando sounded a bit too... And uh, I, I always love stealth games. Uh, I've always been like Destiny. Speaking of Destiny, I always play the Rogue. I always play the, the kind of stealthy subclasses and turn invisible, backstab you. That's that's totally my thing. I'm I'm not a forward fighter at all. Uh, it used to be Vanilla Nando, and that was because I was a massive fan of the show Scrubs, and I had a friend called Chocolate Toomby, and because uh, <laughs> we didn't want to use Chocolate Bear and Vanilla Bear, they were right. taken sadly. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah it just came from there and i've always had characters that had like either shinobi monker or something like that in it so i just thought Sh- shinobi nando why not and then to answer your second question about my destiny experience um it's been rocky of late i'm not gonna lie i, I i'm i'm not one that i'm not like a blind fanboy yeah me uh don't let the collectibles in the background fool you <laughs> um <laughs> every single collector's but I, I was a main, I was a massive fan 
of Destiny. And then year two happened, and there was the content drought. And as you said in previous videos, uh, repetitive, samey gameplay, not really a, a sequel, more of a 1.5. Um, so yeah, it's been really rocky. There's, there's, I said in my own video, you know, like every time there's a new DLC, like we, we grasp on to the hope of maybe this is the one that fixes Destiny. Right. And uh, finally, maybe now we'll get that. Maybe this 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 is feeling like this is going to be the one to do it. Well, it's nice. It's nice to hear that you agree with uh, some of my points, at least uh, about the the Destiny Two release. And um, I like when when I originally was playing Destiny Two. I mean, I played it through with the game three times, so I gave it its fair share. You know, I played through it more times in Destiny One. I gave it the benefit of the doubt. I went back through it three times. I was like, I'm gonna try this again with a different character. Maybe I'll have a different experience. But in the end, I just felt a little bit disappointed. And I also just got really bored of the grind that was after you got to level 20. It was just a huge grind. And I was like, I don't want to spend money on Engrams to try and get better loot. And I, I'm horrible at raids. Raiding parties and me don't mesh for some reason. <laughs> I, I completely get that. And uh, in terms of st statistics for Destiny 2, I don't even think half the player base has com ever completed a raid this time around. I, I, I haven't even completed. I completed the original two raids that came out the raid layer and the leviathan and um i've not even attempted the other ones because i've been that mm. disappointed by the content so no i i know where you come from and even as a destiny fan it hurts and, and you know like anything that you love you're always hoping that like i said the next time's gonna fix it or bring it back to its former goal especially in this day and age mm -hmm. where we seem to have like second chances with games like no man's sky and the the first division and everything we seem to have this like weird phenomenon going on where games are kind of like shoved out and then fixed later or repaired later so yeah. it's, a, it's a weird time to be a gamer i think uh, destiny uh kind of uh, well the story going on with it as we said last time in your video you know th th they're breaking away from activision and um it seems to be for the better from everything i've seen so far so what what is the most major thing that's happening? Is it the is it the cross uh saves? Is it the free to play option? Is it I mean what what's the biggest thing for you? For me, uh this might sound weird unless you know the history of Destiny and what it was supposed to be and what it was due to um as as they say, I don't want to name and shame anyone, but reasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um with a capital R apparently. Um <laughs> That Destiny was supposed to be a shooter, MMO, light, RPG, emphasis on RPG. It's what we were sold on. If you go back and you look up the original E3 trailer, it, w it had a story, it had depth, it had a lot more to it. The classes were kind of sold as like, this is your rogue, this, this is your wizard. And what we got was th this guy has a floaty jump, but also can use guns. And this guy has a cape, but also just shooty shooty bang bang uh so for me it's the fact that they're they're finally embracing the fact that they are an rpg and i mm. again I, I said it like uh in my own video that it, it did seem it was because of reasons that they, they were afraid of scaring off um i believe luke smith called them johnny twin sticks uh, yeah I, I, yeah i remember hearing that <laughs> so like afraid of the <clears throat> call of duty fan base activision come from mm -hmm. you know they they have a shooter background and Call of Duty made millions and they were looking for their old version of Halo rather than some kind of epic space opera. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the, a lot of the videos that I watch, uh, whether they're from, you know, I Hate Everything or a smaller YouTube channel, they always point to the misuse of the characters in the universe. Whether it's um I don't I don't know their names because I'm not I'm not that deep into it myself. But the one guy who is was the major villain of the last, the biggest, the, the last DLC. Prince uh, Aldrin. People, people, yes, Prince Aldrin. Uh, thank you, Shinobi. Um, he was, he, it was, people were saying that he was so misused, they, they didn't like his character just simply because he went from this to this and it didn't make any sense. Do you agree with that? Yeah, he's always been a weird one. He seemed to, now, he's never been fleshed out like most Destiny characters outside of Cade 6. Um... <laughs> It's an unfortunate truth. Any anyone other than Nathan Fillion slash Nolan North has, has not been expanded upon really in the franchise very much. Um, 
and and yeah, he was just angry and grumpy at you from the get go. The first cut scene that that you meet him in, he goes, "Oh God, Guardians, uh, what are you doing here?" And you're like, "Who are you? I don't even know who you are." And already you're like sarcastically shoving me off, and then he he kills Cade Six or kind of kills Cade Six. Um, you could argue, uh, and then it's built up like something's happening to him. The darkness is the light, whatever, and then he just he gets eaten by a giant space meatball and spat out, and then off screen you get shot, and you're just kind of like, what? Yeah, that what, what's it? with the like, off screen shots? Like, what, what's with that? <laughs> I think they didn't want to commit to who <laughs> shot him. Was it Petra? Because they're afraid of like, it's part of the reason why your character lost his voice, as in the voice actor. They're afraid of like telling a story using your character. I feel. Like, like they want him you to be silent, and so you could project on your character. But then it doesn't work for things like that. So, like fade to black. Who shot him? Maybe it was Petra. Maybe it was you. Um, I think they they've backtracked on it. They confirmed it was Petra. Um, and not only that, he's come back to life as a guardian. Spoilers. Uh, so <laughs> that's gonna be weird. But we still not addressed that. It's nearly been a year later. We've not addressed that. It's really weird. That's a major problem with Destiny storytelling thus far hopefully it's going to get better but um yeah they'll introduce something they'll be like, oh this is cool like this the stranger from the first game oh, i don't got time to explain why i don't have time to explain she's from the future or is she never see her again we haven't seen her in four years we we got her gun with a bit of text she's gone mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you think that this next dlc is going to be more uh, more RPG based then, and it's going to be a more story oriented w rather than silent protagonist, just like any other shooter. Well, I don't, I, I couldn't say for the silent protagonist bit because um, Matt Mercer and all them, they're they're always credited for like the grunts and blah blah blah. But I don't <laughs> right. know if they actually have any lines of dialogue. In Forsaken, mm. they had one dialogue Ooh. each. Oh, Probably yeah. just did this, just just Discord, just say, just say I'll get him. And then <laughs> save the sound file. Uh, but right. <laughs> in terms of RPG, definitely, because they've already shown us in the vid doc things like uh, you know, armor, for instance, is now like a, a point of contention for a lot of fans, and particularly a lot of my friends is like, oh, I got this sweet armor, but now it's useless. So I need mm -hmm. to use this other armor that I don't like the look, but I have to use it because it boosts my light or it has the perks I wanted, it got the right role. And like, like you, you don't want to grind out forever trying to get like a bow roll on this one piece of like arms just because you like the look of them now you can kind of like just slot whatever mods you've unlocked onto whatever armor that looks good which is basically what diablo transmog right mm -hmm. that's like taking the armor that you like and just so there's that there's the the flourishes where each class gets kind of like a, a special unique melee um it help add to the depth of each class because that's severely lacking i i do think they're going to embrace it more and even, even the cutscene where you fly showed your other players kind of was always that they did that kind of weird single player thing where even if you're playing cooperatively it only ever showed the one person mm -hmm. so yeah I, I i'm hoping it's going to be a lot better for, for rpg well let, let's say that someone um they want to play destiny solo uh, without any help, without any assistance, they just they they want to get the free to play version, and uh, they don't want to play. With it. Is it possible to play through this game solo? I know when I was doing it, uh, especially back when I had like a maxed out character, it, I could I could beat the final boss without any help. Do you think that's I mean, still it, the case now, or it's possible? <laughs> it's certainly possible. Like as in, it's achievable gameplay wise. The games never like the story and the campaign and the missions have never been hard per se mm -hmm. um they have the heroic version just like <clears throat> halo did make it more difficult and then you'll start needing a fire team teamwork etc so yeah you could definitely do i wouldn't recommend it yeah me i really wouldn't mm -hmm. um it sounds like a strange thing to sell people on but but this isn't a, like like they're trying to embrace it now like they said in the shadow keep vid doc this is an mmo they're finally embracing it i think even more so in shadow keep i do think it's going to become more and more uh, more of the activities are going to be hey you know you you need a friend to do this kind of really or you're going to need at least a team or two i mean people have done raids solo but doesn't mean it's 
particularly fun. Right. <laughs> uh, to, for the people who have played Anthem, but they haven't played Destiny yet, do you think that it would be easy to cross over between the two games? And do you think they'd have a better experience with Destiny over Anthem? Yes, in the sense that for all the flaws Destiny has, it does have... And especially if you you know you go to Last Light and then you do this a la carte, if you want to do the DLC or if you don't want to, yes, it has what Anthem severely lacks is content. Anthem had superb gameplay, as much as people wanted to say otherwise. It like the gunplay was okay, but in terms of flying around, the the, the abilities, stuff like that. But Destiny has brilliant gameplay, and that's what keeps people coming back. The gunplay is very very good. Uh, it's it's gonna be easy. The only difference really is the first person but yeah i think you could easily transition from anthem to destiny um especially with the new rpg mechanics hopefully even like if you like borderlands you'll you'll start to get into it because the exotics are obviously more akin to borderlands in my where where they're like crazy crazy effects and abilities rather than mm -hmm. just you know the anthem had the problem of you got an exotic and it was just better version of a standard gun all right so the last thing for today for for shinobi nando uh coming at you he he streams on twitch he also does videos on youtube as well you can follow him on twitter too but shinobi what is your biggest hope for destiny in the future past destiny 2 free-to-play version my biggest hope is 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 actually like i said dealt diving back to the past the original plan of this like epic space opera mmo rpg light that i could play with my friends i want i want that back i want we know that bungie can do great stories right halo is is a cornerstone of gaming for a reason and it's not just the gunplay it was partially the story people love the story we know they can do it mm -hmm. it's just i feel like and and once again i use the air quotation really got in their way and now they're free they're set free the you know the claws the corporate claws are kind of removed and they can you know a lot of the decisions that they had to you know chop things up or do the chop the story up make it more basic they don't have those constraints anymore that as they said in their own vid doc the, the only two people deciding the future of this game will be the the players feedback and content creators like ourselves you know being, being their voice, if you will, or forums, Reddit, etc., their own AMAs, or, or them, or their own development team. And, you know, when you watch these vid docs, and I encourage any, everyone watching your podcast too, because you, you, you do see their passion seep through. And in this video in particular, this, 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 this Shadow Keep vid doc, you really see their passion. They're like, they almost look revitalized and invigorated to be working on this game again rather than yeah i gotta create more microtransaction bs in order to sell <laughs> so our activision over sorry our our reason overlords uh, <laughs> are happy this month right <clears throat> yeah i think uh i think taking the chains off of this uh off of the company bungie is gonna really do them better than they've been doing them in the past um, and, you know, whether they do a Destiny 3 or they do a new IP, I think that no matter what, the game is going to be 10 times better than the original Destiny and probably better than the original vanilla version of Destiny 2 as well. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I have high hopes. Future. Call me an optimist, but I, I do. I really do. Well, I think we're all a little bit optimistic with, with gaming, and <clears throat> you could definitely say that for Destiny fans who are, you know, people who have been playing the game for a long time, who have sunk so many hours into it. I think this is really, this is the, this is the time to be excited for Destiny, right? Like, uh, you know, you've been disappointed in the past, but I think now that the, you know, the chains are gone, as we keep saying, and you're popping yep. the champagne, I think now is the time to be excited, and it's justified, too. And even if you're new... Like you said, it's free to play. Give it a go. Sure. Yeah, Give it a go. It Give it a try. Um, you can go anywhere, and it's unrestricted free to play as well, which is amazing. And 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 we didn't even. I, I know obviously this segment has then, but we didn't even touch on cross save, guys. You can play with whoever you want, wherever you want. And, right. and and let's say like I played with Yemi just very quickly. If I played with Yemi and he didn't buy Shadow Keep, I could still take him to the moon mm -hmm. and showcase the DLC. And I, for me, it's a mind-blowing business model that, like, try before you buy, right? Come come visit the new moon area. It looks fantastic. I'm having fun with Nando. Maybe I buy it. 
do it that way rather than try to sell me a 40 pound season pass before i even know what's on it that that right. that's that's where i'd end it that was you know that that's where you can really tell the corporate claws and chains are really gone well hey shinobi you know what time it is <clears throat> it's time to ask our old friend mr predicto a question if you have a yes or no question for mr predicto he's listening Mr. Predicto, uh, ooh, what do I want to know in the future? I know, it's, it's, it's a big question. It is, because it's E3, so everything's being revealed as well. Um, <laughs> will we get any crazy surprises about crossplay from Nintendo this year? Ooh, all right. Hey, Mr. Predicto. Will we get some craziness from Nintendo? Speaking of crossplay, definitely yes. Ooh, definitely yes. There you go. Yes, that's what <laughs> I want to hear, Mister Predicto. All right, only time will tell if Mister Predicto is correct or if he's a fraud, a dirty, dirty fraud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shinobi. Well, like I said, if if anyone wants to follow you or or anything like that. Um, his links will be down in the description below, of course. His Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, Shinobi, is there anything else you wanna you wanna say before we scamper off? Um, just uh, don't forget to subscribe to this guy's channel if you're just checking out his podcast because he's an awesome guy and I love him. And uh, if you want to check out all the collectors editions unboxings, feel free to hop onto my channel. Um, other than that, guys, have a great E3 and thank you for having me once again, Yemi. It's been a pleasure as always. Not a problem. I look forward to seeing you open up the Borderlands 3 Diamond Loot Box Edition. Oh, yes. I will be, yeah. yeah I've got my mask ready and everything. I'm sorting it out. Don't you worry. <laughs> All right, Shinobi. Well, thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you. Have a great day, my dude. See you later. Bye. All right, so once again, big thanks to Shinobi Nando for coming on to the podcast and talking with me about Destiny 2 and possible Destiny 3 stuff as well. All that stuff, all that stuff. All of his links will be down in the description below, as I've already said probably a few times. Um, so make sure you follow him on wherever you want to follow him at. Uh, so moving on to the next bit of news. And this is pretty big for people who are fans of SpongeBob. The SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is getting rehydrated. That's right. It's getting a remaster. This 3D platform where you battle against rampant robots all over Bikini Bottom has is going to be remastered, remade by THQ Nordic, and they've announced it before E3. So this rehydrated is going to have enhanced graphics, uh, controls, etc., etc., all the regular stuff, um, and this may make this may make way for future sponge new spongebob games or remasters i know me personally when i was a kid i really liked the uh creature from the crusty crab game that was one that me and my friend nick played a lot shout out we also played a lot of uh lights camera pants if you remember that game it was like a it was like mario party but with with spongebob characters there's a lot of fun times that came out of those games as well so could we see that in the future if this sells well maybe who knows so this game was originally released on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, and the remastered version is going to come to all systems in 2020. All right, so Polymega's next-gen light gun controller is coming out, and it's going to let you play Duck Hunt on your HDTV. Light gun-based video games were all the rage back in the old days. Uh, of course, Duck Hunt really popularized it as well. Um... However, the devices are heavily reliant on CRT technology found inside old television sets. Flat screens are LCD and LED based systems, so they have been rendered obsolete for now. But Paul Play Magi, the team behind the upcoming all-in-one retro system, the Polymega, has just revealed that it is working on a new light gun for the HD TV generation. The gun is dubbed RGC-01, short for Retro Gun Controller, and this unit will plug into the Polymega via a USB connection. It will allow you to play all of your favorite light gun-based games for the NES, SNES, Mega Drive, Genesis, Mega CD, Saturn, and PlayStation. So games like House of the Dead, Time Crisis, Point Blank, Duck Hunt, Yoshi Safari, Leather Reforcer, Snatcher, etc., etc. are going to be playable on your HDTVs. 
Um, so it also, the controller has a few different skins to go along with it, uh, and to comply with the various regional reg regulations related to the sale of le uh, imitation guns, it's going to be available in two different variants, one for North America and Japan, and one for sale for the rest of the world. So the international version has a bunch of like colored tri like oh, it's orange with a bunch of black triangles, and then the version for North America and Japan just has an orange tip, or actually one of them doesn't have anything at all, which is um is is regulation for most of for most of the world. You need to have something that defines it as a fake gun. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, to people who haven't played with light guns, I remember playing with a NES light gun, playing duck hunt and stuff like that at a friend's house a long, long, long time ago. Uh, it was a lot of fun, um, and I never really knew how the system worked, but now I kind of got an inside information on that. So anyone who's uh, going to be getting that poly mega drive uh, thing, <laughs> you may want to pack this in with it. All right, so before E3, uh, Devolver Digital came out and said that my friend Pejo, the uh, kind of like 2D slow motion shoot 'em up, is going to come out on the 20th of June on the Switch and all other consoles um, on the Switch and PC. So uh, it's going to be coming out for uh, $20 regular, but you can get a 15% discount if you pre-order the game on Nintendo's eShop and I think on the on the PC as well. My friend Pedro is a violent ballet about friendship, imagination, and one man's struggle to obliterate anyone in his path at the behest of a sentient banana. The strategic use of split aiming, slow motion, and the old stylish window breach create one sensational action sequence after another in an explosive battle through the violent world. Holy crap, that was a lot of words, and whoo mama! <laughs> I don't know how to read no more. Uh... They also posted a Twitter with a uh, banana, and it says Switch on it, and has two little Joy-Cons. And that was how they, um, that's how they announced it. <laughs> so, Devolver Digital is always funny with their things. If you saw their E3 press conference this year, I think they tried to do the same thing, where they just did this outrageous, outrageous show. But anyways, let's move on to... Spyro, he's headed for Crash Team Racing as a post-launch Grand Prix content pack. Uh, also announced uh, the chickens, the famous chickens, Chick Guzzard Lips and co-host Stu are back to host the news channel CTR TV. Players can tune into CTR TV through the game and listen to Chicken Stew introduce, introduce each Grand Prix, explain all the different challenges and rewards you can win. The roadmap also confirms that Tawan, Tawan, Tana, Amy, Isabella, Maggie, me, and Liz are all correct and present in the game, with Spyro being just a tiny cameo right now. Uh, the one thing is, it's a it's a new Grand Prix. It has Spyro on it. I'm wondering if Spyro is going to be a playable character in the game, and he's going to get his whole new pre Grand Prix experience. That that'd be pretty cool. I really hope that that's true. Um, Chicken Stew are two funny co like co hosts of the news channel. I'm sure a lot of people will get a kick out of them. This game looks to be uh, really fun. Uh, Crash Team Racing, I haven't played it since I was a kid. I'm really excited to get back into it and play it. And also, the trophies have been revealed as well. There's going to be 48 trophies in this game, including a platinum. And if you look through the, the trophies, a lot of them are just regular, basic, you know, finish the Grand Prix. But a lot of them also have to deal with the drift boost uh, function of the game. So there's one that wants you to use all three drift boosts in five minutes in a single race. Another one's going to require the drift boost a total of 500 times. And there's even one for boosting for a whole lap. Now that's a lot of damage. I have a freaking button for that. Why am I saying that? That's a lot of damage! All right, so the Nintendo Wii just is refusing to die. 13 years on, the Wii, the Wii is still getting games brought to it. During E3, Just Dance 2020 revealed that it will be launching alongside all the other cost consoles and the Wii. <laughs> the Wii just doesn't want to die. Nintendo Wii U? Fuck that. No one wants that console anymore. But the Wii? The Wii is still actually pretty popular. Uh, me personally, I still have a Wii. I still play it here and there. Um, lots of fun games still on it, like WarioWare Wii, uh, the Mario Galaxy games, of course. Uh, there's one, uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is a way better game than the Skyward Sword one. Um, what else we got? Uh, Pikmin on the Wii, a great experience, one that you should probably try out yourself. Try it out. Um, 
other ones that are on the Wii that are, like, amazing. I mean, Wii Sports is, of course, a classic. Everyone loved Wii Sports. Even my grandmother loved Wii Sports. And while I was actually going on a trip with my family a few weekends ago, I, I brought the Switch with me, and my parents leaned back, and they're like, hey, is there any games that your grandmother can play on that? I'm like, not really. Not anymore. There's no Wii Sports. There's no Wii Play or anything like that. It's not like it's, you know, simple stuff like that. So, unfortunately, I had to... Um, you know, deny my grandmother access to my Switch. Uh, she's 90 years old, and I feel like she'll probably just get frustrated and give up it right away. Uh, she has a hard enough time playing Phase 10 right now, uh, but, you know, she's still a trooper, still a trooper. But anyways, getting back to the to the topic at hand, the Nintendo Wii is going to be getting Just Dance 2020, and that's going to come out in November 2020. What? No. Yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah, uh, I forgot. Just Dance is like cars and stuff like that. It has a release date for the next year for the game coming out the last year. It's it's dumb. It's dumb. Um, so yeah, the Wii is getting this. The Wii U isn't. Uh, the Wii U can play Wii games, so it's not like the you know you you can't play it on the Wii U. But the visuals are probably going to be a little bit less on the Wii as well. Uh, so we'll see where it goes from there. Just Dance 2020 uh, is going to have a Bangarang by Skrillex on it. All right, uh, fan spends over $1,000 on every Johto Pokemon plush, and that's just a start. Last month, uh, there was news that every single Johto Pokemon was set to launch in Japan in, in, Japan in plush form, uh, which is going to be joining the original Kanto set. So if you know anything about that, I'm sure you, you, you're way smarter than me with Pokemon right now. And one lucky person has done what many of us wish we could do, and they have gotten every single one of them. So the Twitter user Sekai1215 has shared the following images online of all of his plush toys in his basket. He has all of the unknowns. He has all of the different Pokemon, including, um, I, I can see a Poliwag uh, and a Zubat. Jesus. It totaled out to 150875 uh was it Chinese Chinese money? <laughs> I don't know what it's called, yen? <coughs> um But anyways, he also owns all the Kanto figures as well. So that's 151 plus however many plushes he just got. Um so be jealous. <laughs> that is that is that is the bottom line here. That is a lot of plushies to have. It's a big collection costs a lot of money uh and i'm sure that it will just gain value as it sits on his shelves probably all in plastic bags if he's smart all right so PETA, who is the american uh based animal rights organization have um <laughs> have oh my gosh i don't know this is this is so cringe Okay, so they put out a Twitter, a tweet. Jeez, I sound, I'm sounding like an 80-year-old man. They put out a Twitter. They put out a tweet saying, um, I'm not your Wooloo sweater. And it has a picture of Wooloo, the new Pokemon that was shown off during the Nintendo Pokemon Direct. Uh, so what they said is, love the new Pokemon Wooloo. They have a special message for all of us in the future for the trainers. And it says, I'm not your Wooloo sweater. Sure enough, backlash has ensued, and Pokemon fans began to shame PETA for the apparent spread of misinformation about sheep shearing. Animal rights activists even came to Wooloo's defense, explaining how real sheep could suffer from heat stroke and illness if their wool isn't clipped on a regular basis. PETA has done this for a few other games like Super Meat Boy and even Super Mario, uh, but uh, this one is just cringy to me. I don't know if it's still up. I don't think so. I th I'm pretty sure they took it down, but uh, it generated a lot of heat. And it wasn't the good time. It wasn't the good kind. It wasn't the good kind. Good kind. They they got, PETA got uh, heat exhaustion and passed out. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking with this. I mean, <coughs> they they obviously just didn't put much thought into it. Um, who knows? I I, I don't know. I just want to I just want to forget that this even happened. To be honest with you, because this this is this is pretty dumb. This is this is really just cringing me out of my skin. PETA. Boo! You stink! right now all right so the next game from cuphead's developer is going to feature 2d hand-drawn animation just like the other game in the in that they've made cuphead 
The developer is currently working hard on the Delicious Last Course DLC expansion for Cuphead, and once this is out, the studio, called Studio MDHR, has plans for the future to create another game. In an interview with Japanese magazine Famitsu, the uh, siblings Chad and Jared Moldenhauer, who founded Studio MDHR, were there to uh, talk about a potential sequel in the 2D running gun platformer. They are stated as saying, Because we are working now on the Delicious Last Course DLC, most of our time is being taken up with that. But at the same time, we are still thinking about what we should do for the future. While the idea is still in an extremely early stages, we are building up the proof of concept and getting things ready. I can't say anything about the content of the game yet, but given that a 2D hand-drawn anime is our company's focus, you can at least expect that in our next-gen game uh, with the same style so that'll be pretty cool it took them a while to build cuphead and make cuphead working uh it's a very rigorous tough 2d shooter 2d platformer uh, so hopefully they stay in that same vein there's still an audience for that people still like tough games and this game looks cutesy on the outside but it's very very sinister on the inside with its with its crazy level design crazy bosses boss rush modes um Boy, even Chronoside, who is one of the best 2D platformers I've ever seen, he got stuck. He got stuck on a boss. Um, so yeah, exciting things for the future of the Cuphead developer. Uh, hopefully this delicious last course is going to be an excellent DLC expansion. The dating simulator Dream Daddy is going to hook up with the Nintendo Switch and other consoles in the future. Um... So the developer of Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator, Game Grumps, ooh, they've uh, announced that Nintendo Switch and mobile devices, devices are going to get da the Dream Daddy dating simulator. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's going to be coming in the very near future. More precise information about the release date is on the way, but there is a trailer out now, and they're saying that it's going to launch for the, Ninten the Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android in the very near future. This is a strange game. Just listen to the description of this game. You and your daughter have just moved into a sleepy seaside town of Maple Bay, only to discover that everyone in your neighborhood is a single dateable dad. Will you go out with a teacher dad, goth dad, bad dad, or any of the other cool dads in this game? With minigames, side quests, and a variety of paths and endings, Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator, is the year's most anticipated dad-based game. Ugh, V, that's disgusting, mate. So if you want to get this atrocity of a game, just wait. It's coming to the Switch and uh, iOS and Android. Wee-hoo! Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has now sold more than 1.7 million copies worldwide, which is exceeding expectations of the developer. Now, this isn't the most popular game on, that Nintendo has, and it came out on uh, d in, in December of 2017, and it was a must-have game for Season Adventurers. I've heard some mixed things about this game, but it has been selling pretty well. In an interview with 4Gamer, uh, they revealed that 1.73 million copies of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has been sold as of March 2019. If it cracks the 2 million copies mark, there's a chance that the open world RP JRPG could eventually surpass lifetime sales of other major Switch releases. In the same interview dating back to last September, uh, the um, spokesman said that he wasn't willing to provide any concrete details about the future of the series, but right now it looks rather bright since the game is selling well. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Limited Edition comes with a Game Boy Steelbook and an art booklet as well. It's a limited edition release with a 120-page art book, steelbook, uh, Game Boy uh, case, and box to put it all in. Right now, it's only set for a European release, uh, so we'll see if this comes to the rest of America. Uh, Nintendo UK Twitter put out a statement saying this is the limited edition of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. It will be available on the 20th of September and includes a Game Boy themed steelbook. Hashtag Nintendo E3. Now I know that I said nothing E3 is going to be shown here and this is technically not E3. Uh, they didn't show this off at E3. This was on Twitter. Um, so we'll see if this comes to America and other parts of the world as well. I'm guessing it will. I'm guessing it will. This is a pretty cool set. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening steelbook case is is to die for, and I'm sure that lots and lots of people are going to love that 120-page art book. So if you're a fan of Legend of Zelda, maybe uh, hook yourself up with a uh, European IP address. Uh, you know, use use some of those uh, fancy gadgets you got for voice over IP, and uh, maybe buy one of these and and have it shipped to yourself. 
or have your European friends buy it for you and ship it to you. What other way you can do it? If you're a fan of Zelda, this is a must-have. All right, so the Uncharted movie is happening, and it has a release date of December 2020, the 18th of December 2020. And also, Spider-Man's Tom Holland will be playing the lead role of Nathan Drake, and also the director is Dan Tatchenberg, which I already stated in a way, way earlier podcast. It's really been an up-and-down struggle for the Uncharted movie. It's gone through cast changes, director changes, etc., etc., and now Hollywood Reporter is stating that the latest draft of the screenplay adapting the Naughty Dog video game is coming from Jonathan Rosenberg and Mark Walker. Uncharted is going to go up against Steven Spielberg's big-budget West Side Story remake, which Fox is opening the same day. I can't quite believe it yet myself, but I'm really excited to see how Tom Holland will handle the role of Drake, Nathan Drake. Now, the weird thing is, I mean, even though he doesn't show it in his movies, Tom Holland is very, very British. He's very British. I guess I, I, I am very British. I say, Uncle Shaw, where's the lamb sauce? Uh, he's very British, and he's able to mask that very, very well, just like the lead actor in The Walking Dead. I don't remember his name right now. Um, he also can hide it very well. I think he's a good fit for a young Nathan Drake, don't you? Um, maybe he'll age a little bit by the time that this movie comes out, so it looks a little bit more, uh, he looks a little older, maybe a little more mature, but doesn't matter. I think this movie is looking to be pretty good with this director and this lead actor. All right, uh, get out, get out your freaking vodka and bottles of beer, because, uh, we're, we're talking about Anthem again. Yes, that's right. Anthem Cataclysm Outrage could be the death of BioWare's looter shooter, Anthem. So things haven't looked good for Anthem for a while now. They've tried and tried and tried and just it's fallen flat on its face so many times. And now the Cataclysm event, which was which was shown off all the way back in its original E3 presentation, is not exceeding any expectations. It's actually below expectations. Footage shown during the developer's most recent live stream and impressions from those who have dabbled in the event via the game's public test server have said that it's not as chaotic, devastating, or anything like that. It's not that big of a storm that engulfs the world of Anthem. Needless to say, players are not impressed. Already spawning its own range of dumb jokes and memes, the Cataclysm is, in reality, a timed activity that sees you completing a bunch of repetitive tasks before taking on a final boss, all while a blue filter is applied to your screen. For an event months in the making, and an event that we've talked about a lot of times uh, about you know from E3 and everything else, it is very very underwhelming. Is this what we're going to expect from the future of Anthem? Just more and more disappointing things? I think so. Uh, this game, I, I have it on my shelf still for some reason. It's still there. Don't know why. Don't know why actually. Uh, I, I have not played the game in so long that I probably forget how to play the game anyways. I just, I don't know. Just as the article says, it's it's a very boring and, and uh, grindy game, and I'm just not a fan of those. I'm just not a fan of those. All right, so Day is Gone is getting some... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me put on my Deacon hat. All right, so Day is Gone is getting some free DLC, and it's available now. The DLC kicks off with a new survival difficulty mode, and it will be downloaded for about 16 gigabytes. New challenges are becoming part of the game, including and, and they rotate on a weekly basis. They will test your shooting, driving, and horde killing abilities in an assortment of scenarios, which I kind of like. In the later halves of this game, parts of this game, there are scenarios set up for hordes, and they are freaking fun to play. Just tons of explosives everywhere, tons of things to do. It was really, really fun way to end the game. There will also be modifiers and scores to track, and in doing so, you'll also earn patches, which will come with perks. 12 challenges over 12 me weeks mean you'll be returning to Days Gone more than you may have thought so, uh, after playing through the campaign. That's not all, though. You'll be getting them some new character skins as part of the new challenges, including playable skins for Deacon, Flash... Oh, I'm sorry, Apocalypse Deacon, Flashback Deacon, and Shirtless Deacon. Ooh, mm, sexy. And you'll also get to play as Boozer, Ricky, Addy, Iron Mike, and six other unannounced characters. This is cool. This is a nice content update. Uh, it's a free content update. And after playing through Days Gone myself, I'm feeling a little bit bummed out from the game. I didn't quite get an experience that was as fulfilling as maybe Horizon Zero Dawn or something like that. 
Um, I really just thought that the game was really monotonous for a while. It felt like it was going nowhere for such a long time. And then finally, when things were swelling, the game once again dropped the ball and went a little bit stale for a while. And then the ending happened and I was pretty, oh, I was okay with it. Uh, there's not really much character progression in this game or characters and you know that I cared for in this game. Uh, the open world was kind of stale and stuff like that. I know I wanted to do like a huge review of this game and I'm still working on it. So eventually I'll come back and do a bigger review of it when the news dies down a little bit. But for now, just know that Days Gone is still a kind of mediocre experience. But I am excited for new content coming to the game, which may improve, may improve its standings in my mind. But for now... Days Gone, get it if you want it. It's a good open world game. It has a lot of things that it does well, but also has a few things that it does wrong. And those things that are that it does wrong are really wrong. So, yeah. If you want to get it, get it. You know, wait for a sale, I say. But this is cool. New DLC, which is free. Nice. Uh, this is cool information for your Ghost Warrior fans out there. Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts is going to come to Serbia. And it is coming soon, they say in the trailer. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like the last Sniper Ghost Warrior games, Ghost Warrior 3. I thought it was pretty good. I actually liked it myself. I liked it a lot more than the other games in the series. Uh, even though it had a lot of technical glitches in the game that restricted, that it actually stopped you from uh, platinuming the game, they fixed them, and I had fun with the game while I had it. Uh, of course, I don't still play it anymore because it's, a, you know, whatever. It's, an, it's a whatever game, but this new game called Contracts is going to be taking away all the jungle stuff, and you're going to the hills and mountains of C Serbia. Is it, is it pronounced Serbia? Siberia? Siberia. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So the developer CI Games is, is bringing you to the S Siberian wilderness, and the footage contains a PvP aspect to the game. So players can go online, they can hunt you down, they can track you down, and they can kill you at any moment in the game. It's an interesting mechanic in a game that needed something something like this, something new, something fresh. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be a lot better than the Watchdog 2, Watch Dogs 2 PvP mode. This seems like something that could really annoy you, but it also could really be a lot of fun. Uh, I hope that there's a way to turn it off in the game so that if you don't want that experience, you don't have to do it. But it would be pretty cool to be hunting down your contract, trying to find a AI player, and then a real player is hunting you down as well. That can be pretty cool. Kind of uh, Predator-esque, I guess you would say, but uh, a little bit less uh, bloody. <laughs> Alright, so Sony is testing 16-player party chats right now, and they're also testing improved audio quality and an exclusive thing that's uh, exclusive to the U.S., also uh, chat transcriptions which will be available through the ps4 itself or through the smartphone app and that will convert voice and voice to text Whew, i'm having some trouble here with the words um so you can write something in the chat without being you know without having to open up the the little interface for using your keyboard to do it um and that's pretty neat that's pretty neat all right, so Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, the reimagining, I have to keep reminding myself to say that, says you won't fail missions for killing civilians, but you will be judged by the in-game characters. Usually in previous titles, if you shot an innocent civilian or someone who wasn't you know, fighting against you, essentially the game would make you restart at a checkpoint and it would give you a message saying, you know, don't kill civilians. <clears throat> So, because of this, at the end of the mission, you'll be evaluated for your collateral damage, and it'll give you a rank from A to F. And it sounds like there'll be some incentives for keeping your fire in check. Uh, the developer has come out and said, obviously, we're trying to make things much more realistic, much more vers vers vis visceral, much more visceral this time, so that if you kill a single civilian, you feel bad because you might see a woman go for a gun, but instead she's going to grab for her baby, says campaign gameplay director Jacob Minkoff. We want you to feel bad, and the characters around you will respond and react to what you did and what you do. So it seems like they're really trying to throw more of a spin on this Modern Warfare game, make it a little bit more darker, maybe. Uh, especially with the whole, like, she's going to grab her baby instead of a gun thing. Uh, that can cause, that that could probably be really freaky. It, this, this may be one of those games that uh, goes down in history as being one that is good it, one of the best call of duties but it could also be one that's like yeah they built it up like this and then it was kind of lame so we'll, we're waiting for more information about call of duty modern warfare but so far things seem to be looking pretty good 
And the final thing for news today, Uncharted 2, 3, and The Last of Us are going to lose their multiplayer cap 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 <laughs> capabilities on the PS3 in September. So from September 3rd, the multiplayer servers are going to be turned off. Um, until then, Naughty Dog wants you to celebrate the various titles, so all the DLC for the games are going to be free in a bundle on the PlayStation Store. A lot of the Uncharted ones are all DLC-based, so that's probably why they're giving away free anyways. And I think The Last of Us DLC is mostly just... Uh, multiplayer stuff as well except of course for the big expansion which was um left behind uh so they've been shutting off a lot of servers for these games um i guess it's just the amount of people playing on them is not enough to keep the servers alive i know some of these games have trophies for the multiplayer like the last of us and stuff like that so if you're a trophy hunter and you still have the last of us to do you're working through it now you might want to speed it up a little bit, may want to get that out of the way first, because they are going to be shutting down the servers for The Last of Us and the other titles that I mentioned. The Last of Us Remastered is not going to be affected by this, though, and also the the Un Uncharted the Nathan Drake collection, the, the multiplayer was never brought over from that, so you don't need to worry about that as well. All right, and that's going to just about do it for this episode of YemiCast, a video game podcast, but the last thing I wanted to do today was to open up my first ever pack of Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards that are new. Who? This is not going to be in the audio only version. This is just going to be for the visual version of the podcast because it is very 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 visual. I haven't opened up a Yu-Gi-Oh card pack since I was like 14 years old. My Yu-Gi-Oh cards were stolen from me and even though I messaged the person saying, "Hey, you're going to pay me back for those cards?" he never responded to me. So, I've been ghosted once again. So, let's open up a new pack. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game Speed Duel Pack. Arena of Lost Souls. It has Yu-Gi on the front with a character that I have. I don't, I don't know that character. Because I've been out of the loop for Yu-Gi-Oh! for quite some time. So, let's open this baby up. That's right. This baby. I'm not grabbing a gun. I'm grabbing a Yu-Gi-Oh! card pack. <laughs> so, it seems like a pretty light pack. There's, uh... Oh, geez, there's four packs in this. It seems like there's only about one or two cards in each one, maybe three at the most. Oh, don't you just love the sound of uh, someone opening up a card pack? Oh, this is ASMR, guys. This is ASMR. I fucked it up. I fucked it up. <laughs> here we go. All right, so I opened it the right way. So what do we got here? What do we got here? So there is one, two, three, four cards per pack in these ones. And let's see what we got. I'm just going to throw the trash on the floor. PETA can sue me later. So we got music Musicians Unite. Magicians, not musicians. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let me turn off my light for a second so that you can see the card. Music musicians? Magicians, not musicians. Jeez, yeah, me. Come on. <laughs> uh, so this allows you to control two or more attack position spellcaster monsters. Target one of them, its attack becomes 3,000 until the end of the turn. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, I remember this guy, Skull Servant. He came with the um, with the Joey pack, I'm pretty sure. The Joey pack uh, all those times. This is a zombie card. I remember this dude. I remember this dude. Oh, all right, I know one monster. I also got White Elephant's Gift. Send one face-up non-effect monster you control to the graveyard. Draw two cards. All right, pretty neato. I'm building my deck right now. And of course, one of the classics, D-Spell. This will target one spell or spell trap card on the field, destroying that target if it is a spell. So if it's a trap card, you can't destroy it. That's a pretty basic one. I've had that one before myself. Oh, pretty neato. All right, let's go into the pack. I don't think like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I don't think there's like any super secret rares or anything like that. I think maybe there's like more powerful cards here and there, but I don't I don't think that there's... um. There's like any uh, like holographics like Pokemon or anything like that. So this might be a little bit more, um, you know, dumb for people who are like, I love Pokemon because of the because of the really cool cards. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh is not really like that. There are holographic cards, but they're mostly just special. Uh, so this card allow is called Wicked Breaking Flame Bridge. Bow Wow. Oh, geez, that's a long name. Send one card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one monster on the field. Equip this card to that target. It gains 500 attack and negate the effects of the opponent's monsters destroyed by battle when equipped. So that's actually pretty good too. So if, if a monster card has a uh, more of a brownish look to it, that means it has a special ability. And that will negate the special ability. 
Ah, oh, looks like I got a fusion card called Great Mammoth of Goldfine. I remember having the Mammoth Graveyard card, which is part of the Yuki, the Yuki set. Actually, this isn't this isn't a combination of those two. This is just uh, this is the snake hair combined with dragon zombie. That's really weird. I would think that the mammoth graveyard would uh, would be the card for that. Yeah, whatever. Next, we have defusion wave motion. This card is not treated as a fusion card. If your opponent controls a monster, pay 1,000 life points and target one level seven or higher spellcaster monster you control. Then this turn, it must attack all monsters. Oh my gosh, too many words. Too many words. Too many words. And, oh, speaking of um, holographic, and speaking of brown cards, I got one. This one's called King of the Skull Servants. The original attack of this card is combined with a number of King of Skull, the Skull Servants and Skull Servants in your graveyard by a thousand. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish one other King of Skull Servants or one Skull Servant from your graveyard. So this works in tandem with my Skull Servant that I got earlier. Uh, so essentially, if you have one Skull Servant in your graveyard, you'll have a thousand attack points on this card. Right now, it's at a, a question mark. I, you can't really see it because my camera's not in focus. Uh, there's a question mark and has zero defense. So depending on how many you have in your graveyard, you can essentially get like 3,000 attack points um, if you have three of these guys. So that's actually a really good card. Uh, uh, I, I would probably add that one to my deck, especially if I have some more Skull Servants. Not too bad. Not too bad. Pack number three, everyone. Jeez, we're, we're breezing through this. I don't want to make this an hour long. I apologize. I opened up this pack really well. You can't really see. Uh, this card is called Half Shut. Target one face-up monster on the field. It cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. Also, its attack is halved until the, the end of this turn. So that's kind of nice for people who maybe have a card that they don't want destroyed yet. They can get, a, they can get it. Armored Zombie. I've had this card before. Uh, he's just a, he's just a samurai's looking zombie. Ah, shield and sword. This was in Joey's deck as well. Uh, this replaces the attack and defense of the monsters, uh, that you, that you, um, of all face up monsters on the field. So that is a really good card. Especially if someone has like a really powerful monster, but their defense sucks. Use that card. Use that card. And we got another brown card called Harpy's Pet Dragon. This came in one of the packs that I got when I was a kid as well. You gain 300 attack and defense for each Harpy Lady on the field. So you need to have Harpy Ladies for this. And I think Harpy Lady came in Yugi's set, if I'm not mistaken. And we have one more pack to open up. So let's get this baby open. Why did I, just, why did I decide to do this, you might ask? I don't know, I was feeling very nostalgic after seeing P2 open up so many Pokemon packs on his channel. And I was like, damn, I, I should get some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. So let's go ahead and look at these. Uh, we, we got one trap card. We finally got a trap card. This one sends two cards from your hand to the graveyard, and it special summons two soul tokens with a attack of one and a defense of zero. They cannot be tributed except for tribute summon. Uh, that sounds like a pretty dumb card. We got another half shut. Oh boy, oh boy. We got the snake hair monster. Uh, gotta love that one. And we got another... Oh, wow, this is a <coughs> this makes me kind of sad. We got another fusion card, and it's a Battle Ox Cross with Mystic Horseman. If you guys don't remember, I've talked about it before. Battle Ox, my last, my, my famous deck that was stolen was based around Enraged Battle Ox, and I had like four other Battle Oxes with it. So kind of like that Servant card and the um, King of the Skull Servants card. Uh, they would, it would literally have the same effect to rage, enraged battle ox. Enraged battle ox, for as many battle oxes you had on the field, would get about, like, 500 to 1,000 points, uh, attack points per card on the field. So, that's a trip down memory lane, and that kind of makes me a little bit sad. But we got a nice little, we got a nice little deck started. We got a nice little deck started. I may, I may get some more decks. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use that little code, uh, to get some more, uh, speed duel packs. The Yugi ones seem to be pretty good. Uh, maybe next I'll get a Joey one, or maybe a Seto Kaiba one. It's time to d -d 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 end the podcast. Thank you so much for coming to the premiere of the podcast. This one was probably really, really long. I'm, I'm trying to account for the Shinobi Nando conversation. Um, but thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Thank you so much for uh, coming to the premiere of the, of the podcast. 
uh, on Wednesday at 4, 3, 4 o'clock Eastern Time. I really appreciate that. Uh, if you want to, you can also catch the podcast on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Apple Music. <clears throat> Uh, the podcast also premieres on Sunday at 9.30 a.m., which will be the E3 E3 Mega Show. And hey, we're going to be pulling out Banjo-Kazooie stuff. You know why? I'll tell you why in the next episode. I'm sure most of you know anyways. Uh, but anyways, once again, thank you so much for showing up. Thanks for sticking around. Um, it, it was a great episode, I would say. A lot of fun, a lot of fun news came out this week. Uh, but like I said, E3 stuff is going to be shown off uh, next week. So make sure you come around for that. Um, like I said, as always, no matter what platform you're listening on, I appreciate you no matter what. So even if you did miss the Yu-Gi-Oh card opening pack in the audio-only version, uh, I don't care. I appreciate you no matter what. Everyone else who's watching and listening, once again, thank you so much. And I am your host, Yemi the Ferret, and this has been YemiCast, a video game podcast. <laughs> <laughs>